Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. In today's episode of Groundworks Construction, we will be showing the design of a big SSTO, uh, SSTO Heavy Mark V Yellerhorn. And it's a little bit different than uh, Odin that I have shown previously because it's using the Mark IV cockpit and parts. And also this is in the version 090. So first we will be redesigning the payload. If you remember, I was using a while back a fuel tug, which um, I consider to be a very handy for deployment to the Kerbal Space Station Big Bang. And as you have seen in the episode uh, Flight of the Odin, this has been pretty successful. So this is slightly improved design to make sure uh, that I have enough SAS authority. So uh, first, as I said, I'm designing the fuel tank and the tug. So we put standard probe core, RCS, SAS, fuel tank and another docking port using the big docking ports. Also note that I'm showing the whole video slightly accelerated because it takes a while for it to be constructed and I don't think you need to see it like in the original speed. So yeah, now we will be adding, uh, let me see, just a couple of, mm -hmm. I'm looking for a small octagonal strut, I believe, let me just see. Actually, no, I'm looking for the RTG. Yeah, 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 I forgot about that part. I could be putting... Uh, this is a little bit post-commentary, so if I forget something, <laughs> excuse me. So, four RTGs to make sure that it is powered enough. Moving SAS slightly a bit higher, so they don't overlap as much. Cool. Oh, and then I figured I would need to move the RTGs higher because I would really need to put a small octag cubic octagonal strut together with the RCS, um, RCS thrusters. So we will be doing pretty much in the same fashion as we did um, in the episode KSS Big Bang, The Making of Odin. This time I'm just showing a little bit more in-depth construction and some of the benefits of using 090, which is basically I can select root and I can select how I want to attach this particular uh, probe and or this particular craft. So let me see. Now I'm uh, I have attached. Oh, let's see. Turning it a bit. Hold on. I'm going to put this girder here, like this. And I'm putting a second on top of it. And then I will be flipping it downwards. Cool. So let's see. Now let's put the thrusters on. The RCS thrusters. And to, we need to make sure that this is properly balanced. So I'm using here RCS build days, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we put four times symmetry. And let's just see. Okay, I think this places it well enough. And let's now call it. So let's call it something like the fuel tug or something, yeah. Okay, a basic description that this is a fuel tug should suffice. Okay, save and um, I think just checking the different directions, making sure that it works with all of them, that we have no excess rotation um, during the translation. Fine, and now I am just want to save it as a sub-assembly, which I think would be kind of useful. So now it kind of complains that let's select attach by this route and 
Now we can put it as a correct subassembly. Okay, that's enough for the subassembly. Now let us proceed to making of the SSTO. I will be also showing this at time acceleration because there really, really is not a point. So starting with the cockpit, let's see then, looking for a fuselage, cargo bays, etc. Let me see, hold on. Okay, first, let's see, a small uh, RCS fuselage. Yep, this we will put, make sure that uh, we put all what we need inside. So first, okay, a little bit of fuel tank, liquid fuel tank, and then R uh, RCS fuel, so monoprop. This is the engine section, and sometimes the attachments can get a bit wonky, but let's see. Inside I want to put uh, remote tech... Uh, Probe controls, you never know if we need to, like, just for short range communication antenna, a couple of RTGs just to make sure that we have enough power generation. Cool. A couple of cans of life support. Maybe not the biggest ones, a little bit smaller ones should do it. Oh, come on, this is just huge. Here I'm just trying to basically put RG RTGs below so that I have more space for fuel can or life support cans. Okay. Let's see, and then also the waste container, okay, those are put in place and I think it's time that we start putting the fuselage and the rest of the, and the rest of the superstructure. Okay, so I think now it should be proper time to add the cargo bay. Let's see, <laughs> cargo bay, cargo bay, okay, yeah, first the nose cone. And here is a very interesting where actually Tweak Scale is trying to play tricks on me. So let's see. Now I want to put the cargo bay. Open it. Okay. So here we will be placing our payload. Oh, actually I found a nose cone that has also a docking port. So I think that will be better served by this one. So, yeah, let, definitely let's put this one in case we need to dock the shuttle somewhere. Or an SSTO. So, yep. Let's see what it looks like. Cool. That would work. Then... Okay, this is a little bit short body, but we are, want to first see how long is actually our fuel tank. So there's an option to put the liquid fuel and oxidizer fuel tank behind, but I have a slight feeling that this will be too short for the orange tank. Let's just put the radial attachment port. trying just pos to position it correctly but and then positioning a big docking port on top of it although let me see cargo bay a bit more yeah I think this will be much better 
Okay, so one can of let's see if we can fit the docking port. Oh, we can actually fit the docking port here as well. Hmm, maybe then we should rethink. Maybe we don't need the radial docking port. We can just put directly and say we will attach radially here. So. And let us put our, uh, yeah, we definitely need a bigger cargo bay. Okay, this feels too big. So maybe I'll just put two smaller dock, dock cargo bays. Something like this. Okay. And yes, this should provide enough space and definitely. Okay. And let us see. <laughs> I think fuselage wise we are almost done. Just need to strut all this. Okay, closed, closed. Let's put this all of these doors on an action group, shall we? Now, time to look for a good engine. Well, when it comes to SSTOs, I mostly like to use Sabres. So, let me just see. just add another fuel tank just to make sure that we have enough delta V now okay where is that saber when you need it oh there you are medium saber at the back two smaller sabers to assist okay symmetry definitely Okay, and time to look for the wings. Now, as you probably know by now, I'm a big fan of procedural wings. So let's find some nice procedural wings, shall we? Let's first save, actually. Okay, and this is the procedural uh, wing SPH type from B B9. It's not actually B9 procedural wing. Just make sure you don't mistake that. So now tweaking its height a little bit, and let's start extruding it. I am a really big, big fan of procedural wings because they really allow you to tailor and the looks and feel of the aircraft or space plane. Uh, because if you were to align them like Legos, I don't think then then you have a higher part count and it becomes rather tedious. Since I like to big big SSTOs then my main issue with it is basically that uh, part count becomes of issue and these wings help me reduce a tremendous amount of parts so yeah i don't consider them to be cheaty because i would expect every wing should be designed to fit a space plane 
I mean, otherwise, what are you trying to do? So, yeah, but like I said, everybody has their own preference. This is mine. So, let's see, okay. Twin tails, just make sure that, that they only have your authority. Now for the wingtips. I always like to put uh, wingtips and I like to turn them 90 degrees roughly or at some crazy angle. I just like that design. So extrude them enough and then basically thin them out. Hold on. Just slightly adjusting angle, thickness and using gizmos to rotate them. And since I'm playing with Ferrum Aerospace Research, they also help with the vertical stability of the plane. So, at least in terms of yaw. Okay. Now for some control surfaces. These are also procedural control surfaces. And I like the aesthetics of these ones. You have to really be careful, by the way, here that you make sure that you tweak the control surfaces and not the wings itself. It's very easy to miss. Okay. Make sure that they are you set that they um, that they control pitch and roll, not yaw. It's good to have this separation because it becomes much easier to control your space plane. Okay, basic design is done. Now let us look for some intakes. I believe. Uh, and I found these intakes to be great because they allow me to mount more engines on top of them. Since currently with the current setup we just don't have enough thrust to weight to be able to achieve any decent velocity. So now I'm adding the intakes and I will be attaching a few more sabers behind. Just, make uh, just first making sure that they are aligned correctly so that I don't get thrust, uneven thrust on the side. So let's see. Put in the mirror mode fine same thing with the bottom ones and yeah so as you can see here behind I have a nice big engine cluster and I will be adding some more let's see it's a lot of engines but having an, a high thrust to weight is very important with this SSTO because we will be ferrying a big amount of cargo which is basically a fuel tank. So in Odin we had a marginally good thrust to weight, so it was fairly decent and it had it was good because of the big three big sabers. This time we don't have place to put the big sabers, so we're putting the smaller sabers, but then again, let's see. Okay, in terms of intakes, yeah, I think I'll put them somewhere around here. Yeah, because this gives a nice looking profile. Okay. And adding just some small touches, which I was thinking to add another SAS unit, but yeah. Adding some RCS ports. Those become very important when you're trying to do performing the docking with a space station and so on later on. 
I'm also trying to put them in the I'm also trying to put them in the correct um, in the correct alignment so I don't get rotational effects. So let's see. Time to add some um, time to add some wheels. Just for the wheels, make sure they're all put in the one row, so they become easier to pivot around. Air brakes. Just a couple of final touches before we actually deploy. And you might be careful with the placement, especially if you're playing with deadly reentry, because the air brakes are the first ones to be burned on the reentry. I'm considering seriously for my next series of episodes just ditching deadly reentry because it causes more performance hit and more troubles for me than it's worth. I like the heating, but I think it needs to be toned down a little. Okay, time to set the action groups. Just making sure that I usually put action group 1, switching the mode on the sabers. and for action group 3, enabling and disabling sabers. Just fixing the, some final things on the control surfaces, just making double checks, and pretty soon we will be launching this. Let's go. Let's see, just uh, hold on. Yeah, and ejection module because I really don't want to kill my kerbals. This has been life saving every time, and they're very thankful for, for it. Okay. Let's load the plane and let's try the ascent. It really has, a, like I said, it has a nice profile and go. Good acceleration on the runway, that's for sure. And it takes off. So as you can see, I will be running, getting to orbit at a lot of time acceleration because you've seen me doing this a lot of times. So. I'll just let you see and enjoy the flight up. 40 degrees angle until we get to some 10,000 meters, uh, 10 kilometers, then pitching down roughly at 10 degrees and accelerating to orbital velocity. And after we pass some 40, 35, 40,000, then we'll just pitch up and go into the rocket mode. So it's ba that's basically the gist. I'm also controlling to make sure that uh, my center of mass will stay in front of the center of lift. So just to ensure that we're using that correctly. And since uh, my center of mass is in front of my center of lift a little bit further, I'm also making sure that I pitch up. I might because my plane tries to pitch down, but. Uh, Still very decent thrust to weight and uh, with all these sabers I'm perfectly capable of accelerating up to the orbital velocity. It just it takes a little bit. Pitching occasionally.
passing 20, 30,000 meters. Forty thousand, forty-five thousand, and pretty soon I'm will be running out of air. By the way, I think if you, these intakes are, are a little bit OP, if you ask me, but still. Okay, I have extended my epilepsis above the atmosphere, and just making sure that we will do the circularization burn. So just now coasting up to the epilepsis. And we're already in space. Okay, and we are officially in orbit, turning on the lights taking a couple of beauty shots and I will just surely briefly show you how do you basically deploy the uh, the payload so you go decouple and here I had some minor glitch but after a while I it got decoupled I, when I went into time acceleration I really don't know why that happened but still it worked By the way, uh, we're coming up on the end of the episode. I hope you like the episode. If you like the episode, please do like the episode. And for more Kerbal Space Program and Naval Action content, hit that subscribe button. Uh, enjoy the rest of the deployment. This is Grumforks signing off.